بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم السلام علیکم سالار خان ہیئر اینڈ ٹو ڈائی ود اے فیو سمپلر ایگزامپلس اینڈ وی مے ڈیڈیوس دا پراپرٹیز ایز ویل ان دس ود دا ود دا ایگزامپلس ایز ویل اینی ویز دیٹس ناٹ آر کنسرن وی اسٹارٹ ود سم سمپلر ایگزامپل دا فرسٹ ایز این ایکسپرینشل سگنل ایکس آف ٹی ایز ایکسپرینشل آف نیگیٹو اے ٹی u of t fine and the corresponding laplace transform x of s is unknown fine now we know we know that the fourier transform for this signal we already know the fourier transform for this signal x of j omega is equal to one upon j omega plus a all right yes now the fourier transform x of s what can we do we can do it by two ways first by relating it with the fourier transform the second by directly using the formula i will use both the ways i will use both the ways x of s is i, I would write it like this zero to infinity exponential of negative a t u of d multiplied with what exponential of negative st integration is with respect to t now what happens u of t would cancel out up well this is from a negative infinity to positive infinity so with respect to u of t now this would come to zero to infinity this is one in this limits you have an exponential of negative at exponential of negative st with respect to t isn't it like this it is now in place of s i can write what I can write uh, uh, sigma plus j omega, right? So I can write it like this: zero to infinity exponential of negative a t exponential of negative sigma plus j omega into t with respect to t. Now I can do what? I can split this. I can split this zero to infinity exponential of negative a t exponential of negative sigma t. exponential negative j omega t this integration is with respect to t now what can i do now i can take this 0 to infinity i have exponential i have a negative sign common i could take sigma plus a common into t exponential of negative j omega t with respect to t have a look isn't this like the fourier transform 1 over j omega plus a over here your a is this thing sigma plus a Now we know that this uh, is an equivalent Fourier transform of this particular thing. So exponential of negative u t. This would be what now for this case we would have that the Fourier transform x of s it would be one upon j omega plus a if that was a single a right. But if we have this thing, so I would have a j omega plus sigma plus a. This is what my Fourier transform is. But we would have a condition. of convergence we would have a condition of convergence as well and what is that convergence so in order for this fourier transform to converge what should it be it's this negative sigma plus a into t so if you put the higher limit infinity over here this thing is positive let's say sigma plus a is positive so positive into negative would give you a positive and then in infinity it would give you a positive infinity an exponential of positive infinity is infinity so which means this would not converge when when this sigma plus a is positive fine for the lower limit for the zero it's, we don't have any problem and why is that so if you put a zero this would any if this is positive or negative the whole would come zero exponential of zero would be one but in the higher limit we have a case so to converge what should be the case for convergence what's the problem this sigma plus a cannot be positive if this is negative let's say if this is negative so this negative into this negative would give you a positive and uh Uh, if this is negative and this is negative so this would give you a positive and i think i said it uh, wrong previously let's say we say it again if this is positive so positive into negative would uh, if this is negative first let's say negative into negative would give you positive and then into infinity would positive infinity so this could not be negative 
this has to be positive yes so to converge what do we have we should have that this is positive if this is positive which means delta plus a is greater than zero if this is positive so this positive into negative would be negative and then you put the limit infinity so exponential of negative infinity would be approaching to zero so it would be finite number so this means this should be positive or i could say that the sigma is greater than negative of a and what is the sigma sigma is real of s and this should be greater than negative of a so if this is my signal x of t if this is my signal x of t uh, which is equal to exponential of negative a t times u of t the corresponding Fourier transform x of s is equal to 1 upon sigma plus j omega is s plus a with the condition real of s should be greater than minus a so we have learned that the, the Laplace transform is not only an algebraic expression. The Laplace transform is completely characterized by two, two things. Write it down. Write it down, please. Laplace transform is completely characterized by two things. Number one, the algebraic expression for x of s. Number one is what? The algebraic expression for s of s. The number two is the values of s for which this expression is valid. The values of s for which this expression is valid. And that expression we call what? We call as the region of convergence. Region of convergence in short it's known as an ROC and we also draw it graphically on and on the complex S play this was example one this was for for, for by, by the by the method of relating it to the Fourier transform or alternatively we can do it by directly using the formula and how is that so I would do it like this that my x of s is equal to uh, negative infinity to positive infinity yes x of t is what exponential of negative a t u of t multiplied exponential of negative s t integration with respect to t you have a 0 to infinity exponential of negative a t exponential of negative s t with respect to t fine now what can I do? I can take negative common with an s plus a. 0 to infinity, exponential of negative is common, s plus a into t. Right? dt. Now you have an exponential of u of t with respect to t. So what would you have? You would get uh, the same exponential back, exponential of negative s plus a into t and then divided by the same power that is s plus a and the limits are the limits are infinity higher is infinity lower is zero now this that uh, that only includes one side that is zero to infinity or negative infinity to zero this is called as the unilateral laplace transform okay so what do we have uh, what do we have Yes, that is it. So now if I put the limits, the higher limit is infinity. So I would write over here. The higher limit is infinity. So exponential of negative infinity is 0. And then you have a minus exponential of 0 would give you a 1. Right? And similarly you have a negative s plus a. So which means that my Fourier transform x of s is 1 upon s plus a isn't it like this it is and the regions of convergence we already know that real of s should be greater than minus of a now the laplace transform may converge for some values of real of s and not for others for example in this case if we have for a greater than zero
if I write it if I write it so if I have for a greater than 0 what do I have I have the Laplace transform what x of s is 1 upon s plus a with the real of s being greater than negative of a fine similarly the Fourier transform continuous time Fourier transform would be what that would be x of s calculated at s equal to j omega this would be 1 upon j omega plus a we know this very well similarly for a less than 0 now if you have for a less than 0 now we know very well that the continuous time Fourier transform does not exist why because it does not converge why because this is not absolutely integrable in that case if you have over here if your a is negative so negative negative would be positive exponential of positive t it would approach infinity so the continuous time Fourier transform will not converge continuous time Fourier transform will not converge and hence and not exist and hence not exist but what about the Laplace transform so the Laplace transform will converge or it will exist because the condition is not on A the condition is not on A right the Laplace transform will exist or in other words I could say it will converge why because the condition is that real of real part of s this only depends on this thing it does not depend on a the condition is that real part of s should be greater than minus of a irrespective of a being positive or negative so this is what is the difference isn't it like this so we have deduced another point that there are signals whose Fourier transform does not exist but Laplace transform does write it there are signals whose CTFT does not exist but Laplace transform does fine moving into the second example let's say first I remove the board okay the second example it's x of t is equal to negative exponential of negative a t u of minus of t and the corresponding x of s is unknown fine say I use the formula directly what do I have I have x of s negative infinity to positive infinity negative exponential of negative a t u of t exponential of minus st with respect to t I take this negative outside uh, u of minus t so which means this would now be a left handed signal so z, uh, negative infinity to 0 exponential of minus a t exponential of minus st dt fine the minus is outside negative infinity to 0 exponential of minus s plus a into t with respect to t again the same thing negative you have exponential of negative s plus a into t divided by negative of s plus a the limits are 0 and minus of infinity okay negative exponential of 
first of all 0 so exponential of 0 would be 1 minus now again we would have the same sort of discussion fs plus a is negative so this negative uh, into this negative would give you a positive and then with negative infinity would give you negative infinity so that's the condition we would be assuming that f plus a is negative right why because this is positive so positive into negative would be negative and then putting t equal to negative infinity would give you exponential of positive infinity which it would not converge so we would be assuming that s plus a is negative fine so anyways now this would give you uh, when you put a negative infinity this would give you a zero fine and then divide by minus of s plus a so this negative would cancel out with this negative and this would give you the, the Laplace transform equal to 1 upon s plus a and isn't it like this it is or again we could calculate it by the same method again as we did in the first example or what can I do by relating it to the Fourier transform so I could say that my x of s as it is equal to negative sign considering it from here negative infinity to 0 exponential of negative a t and exponential negative s t so I have a negative sigma t exponential of negative j omega t with respect to t so can I not relate that wait 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 negative infinity to 0 exponential of negative sigma plus a into t into exponential of negative j omega t with respect to t so can I not say that this is now the Fourier transform of this particular signal can I not say it like this and what's the Fourier transform is 1 upon j omega plus this thing it is it is anyways we are not doing now the, the thing would be the same one upon s plus a we are interested in the region of convergence we are interested in the region of convergence and what is that so in order for this to convert if you put a zero you have delta plus a into zero would be one no problem if you put a negative infinity over here so first of all have a look if this is positive if s plus a, sigma plus a is positive and positive into negative would give you a negative and then you put a negative infinity so you would get a positive infinity exponential of positive infinity would not converge if you have this negative sigma plus a is negative to converge sigma plus a is f negative so this negative into this negative would give you a positive and now you put t equal to minus infinity this would give you exponential of minus infinity which would converge to zero so that's the point which means sigma should be less than minus of a or alternatively i could write real of s should be less than minus of a so which means what have i got i have got x of s equal to 1 upon s plus a with the condition that real of s should be less than minus of a understood yes so the thing is we saw in the previous example example number one also that the Fourier transform was 1 over s plus a in the second example again we have 1 over s plus a what is the significance the significance is that there can be different functions with the same Laplace transform now this is another point there can be different functions with the same Laplace transform but 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 we would have a condition and what's that that's the region of convergence with different conditions and what are those different conditions those are the ROC as as an example if you have if you're given this x of s 1 over s plus a and you're asked for what signal is this the Laplace transform so what would you say would you say this signal or the other signal so to differentiate the thing is we have an ROC 
associated with it. Is that fine till here? It is. So, what do we have? As I already told you, there are two things associated with the Laplace transform, or I could say Laplace transform is completely characterized by two things number one is what it's the algebraic expression for x of s and the second is what the range of values of s values of s for which this expression is valid and by expression is valid what do I mean I mean that the integral is finite and what are these values called these values are called the region of convergence In short, they are called the ROC. And how do we show them? We also show them graphically on the complex frequency plane. So let me show you over here. As uh, you have an example number one and example number two, we've already seen. So if this is my example number one, so you have a sigma over here, you have a J omega over here. Similarly, I draw it for example number two also. I have a sigma over here, I have a j omega over here. I have a minus of a over here. I have a minus of a over here. So what was the condition in example number one? That the real of s should be greater than minus of a. So which means I draw a parallel line over here and I shade this area. So this shows you the region of convergence for example number one real of s greater than minus of a if you see the first example was a right right sided function so for a right sided function the roc lies to the right of a particular line this is the property. We will be seeing the properties of ROC separately in detail, but you can have a look. For a right-sided signal, the ROC lies to the right of a right of a, of a particular line. Similarly, over here in the second, the real of S is less than minus of A. So again, I put a line at minus of A, an imaginary line, okay? And I have it over here. So this suggests what? The second signal, exponential of negative a to u to t, this is a left-handed signal with u of minus t. So for a left-sided signal, the region of convergence lies to the left of a particular line. That is it. That is it. Should I consider poles and zeros as well in this video? Let's say we do. Let's say we do. So first I remove the board. okay so most of the time we would have an uh, the the laplace transform in a, in a in a in a fraction form which means x of s would be some numerator numerator as a function of s divided by the denominator in the as a function of s which means this is called as a rational laplace transform so in that case what do you have if you find the roots if you find the roots so this numerator would have its roots the denominator would have its roots so if you find the roots of numerator of s they are called what they are called the 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 zeros of the laplace transform they are called zeros of Laplace transform and why are they called because at this particular value the x of s would become zero fine similarly if you find the roots of the roots of the denominator polynomial 
roots of denominator polynomial this would give you they are called the poles of the Laplace transform poles which and and at the, at the poles the value of the Laplace transform would be equal to infinity all right pole is uh, you know uh, uh, represented by a cross in the s plane and this uh, zero is represented by zero if i take an example let's say s minus 1 over s plus 2 x of s is given which is s minus 1 divided by s plus 2 so you're asked about the poles and the zeros so if i have it like this this is my sigma axis, this is my j omega axis. So s equal to plus 1 is the 0 of the pole. So at plus 1, what do you have? You have a 0, you draw it like this. Similarly, s equal to minus 2 is the root of the denominator. So at minus 2, you have a, you have a pole. So this is minus 2, this is the pole of it. Now, if you have a pole and 0 at infinity, pole and zero at infinity the concept of poles and zeros at infinity first of all first of all you need to keep in mind that the number of poles is always equal to the number of zeros number of poles is equal to the number of zeros so in any case if you have a physical if you have find if you physically find the roots and the number of poles are greater than the number of zeros so we would consider the the remaining amount of zeros at infinity similarly if you find the number of zeros are greater than the number of poles so the remaining number of poles we would consider them to be lying at infinity that is it and that depends on the order of the equation so if the deno if the order of denominator is greater than the numerator so the number of poles would be greater right let me write number one if order of d of s is greater than order of numerator so d of s would have more roots which means we have more poles so this means that the remaining zeros would lie at infinity this implies more poles right so which implies that the remaining zeros at infinity would be considered at infinity now how do you, if we have two poles and one zero so you would consider the second zero at infinity similarly if we have three poles and one zero so we would consider two poles two zeros at infinity fine Similarly, the second. The second is what? If the order of numerator now is greater than the order of denominator, which means you have more zeros. So this implies you have the remaining poles at infinity. And I believe you have understood this. Is that fine till here? it is so i believe i end this video over here okay i will end this video over here because i'm feeling a little tired see in the next video where i would solve some examples as well as well as uh, a little discussion on the poles and zeros maybe so till the next lecture take care of yourselves and everyone around you do remember me in your prayers goodbye